Unit 3.5, chemical bonding. And again, more specifically, the uh, topic of polarity. Polarity. So, we know based on where we, or we should know based on our understanding of things and electronegativity and location of elements on the periodic table based on unit 2.5 the trends that we deal with in the uh, electronegativity we know that the non-metals are on the far right hand side of the periodic table fluorine is going to have the highest electronegativity value and then it decreases as you go down now this electronegativity value gives us a value or a better way to predict where the electron density is so when we have a polar molecule meaning somebody's pulling on that tug of war differently we can identify who's winning based on electronegativity who's winning the tug of war based on the electronegativity who's pulling harder the element that has the highest electronegativity value is going to pull harder it wants to have the electrons near it it's the friend that doesn't share well so to speak the other side then loses a little bit of that negative charge that it has and that's really what ends up happening is remember this is in covalent compounds and covalent compounds are a sharing of electrons well if you have an unequal share you're going to start to have a little that electron density is going to be shifted and electrons have what charge negative therefore they're going to start to have that slightly negative charge and the other side starts to become slightly positive so we bring back the idea of that electronegativity as well. Linus Pauling gave it that idea, that method. Um, this is a, should be slightly review. They're tabulated values. These are the probably the questions on mastering chemistry that you're like, where do I find the electronegativity values? You have to look up the electronegativity values. I do not have all the electronegativity values memorized. Okay? I was never asked to have them memorized. If I was ever asked, if I had to memorize them for any reason, I would look at it and say, is it justifiable to have high school students? And chances are it's not. Okay? You know, you are given a periodic table for your test. Why? Because I'm not going to ask that you memorize this thing. You're given a periodic table for almost every chemistry test you'll ever take. So there's no reason to not. And so electronegativity values, they're tabulated. If you need them, you can look them up. The book has them. And that's really what that comes down to. I prefer that you look at the molecule and identify based on what the molecule looks like and the elements that are there whether or not it is polar or nonpolar. we're not going to worry about is it slightly polar is it slightly nonpolar? that's not something for us to worry about okay you don't need to worry about that can you identify is it pulling unequal or not 
and sometimes you get ones that are like chlorine and nitrogen on a molecule and they're symmetric and you'd say um that should be polar based on the fact that it's not the same things but when you go to the electronegativity values it's something else well you know what you're thinking in the right manner you're looking at this you're going this isn't symmetric that's the bigger thing is it symmetric did i draw it right the fact that there's those little things like oh two point and especially what happens when you get into ones that are like 2.5 it gets to be really hard to identify that and so we don't how do we indicate the electro the electron density how do we indicate uh this partial charge well it's kind of has a sigma and there are like this little sigma thing up there uh, and it's that partial it looks to me it always looked like a like a 16th uh half note because a half note is open right but it has a flag on it like a 16th note or is it a quarter i don't remember no quarters are full with the line right 16th have the one single flag right yeah. okay yeah well it's an eighth eighth, eighth note yeah that's what it is. So when we look at these, now for ionic compounds, we do not have these negatives, okay? Ionic compounds, it is a literally taking of the electron, okay? You, yes. <laughs> if you have a covalent compound, okay? You have a covalent compound, you get when you get the partial, okay? Only covalent compounds give you those partials. And the partials are only there for polar bonds. If it's nonpolar, you don't have an exchange. Nothing changes. The electrons rotate around the uh, central atom, or the blue atom in this case. And then as, because the, electro, the electron density is closer to it, and they are still sharing electrons every now and then we have the uh, red uh, atoms getting a share of those electrons i kind of look at it as they're like here have the electron just to appease them to keep them quiet as a means of okay fine here you can have the electron and no 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 it's back to mine it just needs to be there and the other thing we can see from this is another way, and if we can't draw the, uh, the, the partial or the sigma, we have another way is to write a plus in that it, on the side that has more positive and an arrow pointing towards the negative. Okay, that is another method for showing where the electrons or the electron density is at. That's the part of that, what show which one is pulling harder. If we can't use this using the method here with the plus with the arrow points towards where the negativity is, okay? So they're always trying to point out where the electrons are at. And a lot of that it comes back to where from the very beginning at the unit two of, okay, we know where the protons and neutrons are at. And then after that, it now all becomes where are the electrons? How are the electrons behaving? Now, we think a lot of times that the electrons indicate behaviors. It doesn't because the number of protons defines what the element is. The number of protons helps us identify the number of electrons. And after that, because it's the electrons that come and go, get shared, not shared, not protons, is why we focus so much of our time on those electrons and point to where they are or where they are not at. This all means something. 
And it will mean a lot more, and this slide will mean a lot more when we get into Unit 5. Unit 5 is called aqueous chemistry, meaning water-based. What we need to know is polar molecules do not mix with nonpolar molecules when they are both liquids. Why does oil and water not mix? Not because of density, because of polarity. The fact that oil is on top of the water is a matter of density. Oil is more dense or less dense than water. That's why it's on top. The fact that they do not mix is based on polarity. They also do not mix when they are solids. And it really comes down to they do mix because when they're gases because there's too much space. Why is polarity important? If you've ever gotten uh, grease on your hands, whether it be engine grease, cooking, or whatever it may be, paint, they say you have to use this, you know, Gojo, Goo Gone. Technically, you can use gasoline. Not really suggested, especially if you're working with an open flame. The reason why that works is polarity. You need a non, you need a polar or non-polar solvent. Water is polar. Water doesn't get rid of it. You need a non-polar solvent. Dawn dish soap. It's so gentle. What it has is it has a non-polar side and a polar side. That's why it works so well. It fighting grease. They're just really long molecules that allow that to happen. And therefore, in end of unit three, chemical bonding.